This is probably going to be my uh, longest spiel of the day, and it hopefully won't be very long. But um, I'm Bill Jones. I'm, a, as I said, a consulting hydrogeologist. Uh, years ago, I worked for the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, I've got a master's in hydrology from the University of Virginia. Uh, don't hold that against me. But I, this is one of the sites I did study for some landowners uh, that are concerned about the potential effects of the pipeline on their water supply. And this is a little bit out of the way. I really, um, I don't think we'd plan to stop here. The current route of the pipeline actually will cross about two miles to the south of us. Uh, but I want to point out that all of the water in this valley, most of the year, is groundwater. The water you see in the creek right now, we've got a little bit of probably surface runoff and it's storm runoff that's still uh, running out from the last storm. But by midsummer and into the fall, this will all be groundwater. It's fed by springs. We don't know where all the springs are. Uh, this particular spring, I think is rather intriguing. It's slightly thermal. Uh, the water temperature here is about 68 degrees. Most of our springs coming out of limestone around here will be about 52. Uh, so the water is very slightly elevated in temperature. It's a mixture of old water and presumably newer water. And by old water, we mean water that percolated into the ground maybe 30 years ago, maybe 100 years ago. We don't know. We don't know where it entered the ground. All we know is it's coming out here. And this would be a hard one to study. Uh, most of these karst springs we can uh, study using tracer tests. We inject a, a usually fluorescent dye uh, into a sinking stream and watch for it to come out. And usually it'll come out within a few days, a few weeks, a month maybe, depending on the distance. This could take years. You're not going to study this by tracer tests. We don't know where the recharge area is. Um, and we don't know what might interrupt it. Now, you all are familiar, we have hot springs coming up the valley, uh, starting down near Covington at uh, Falling Springs, and then moving on up. And this is probably kind of the northernmost ones for ways anyway. There's one other thermal spring I know of about a mile up the road here. But these are kind of unique features. Um, and no matter how much we study this, I don't think eventually, hopefully, we will learn more about the recharge area, but uh, it's going to take a while. Uh, we do have some water samples from this, so we know a little bit about the geology of it. Uh, the water's going to be super saturated with respect to calcite, I can assure you of that. And a lot of these will kind of deposit travertine uh, on down below somewhere. Uh, Falling Spring would be a great example of that. But the thing I really want to emphasize here is what we don't know, and that is, obviously, about this case, we don't know very much. Uh, all of these springs that we know of going up the valley, uh, some of them are very small seeps. Uh, they might be dry half of the year. Uh, some of them people use for local water supply, but we don't know where all the springs are. Uh, we're going to see a bunch of sinkholes up here. As a matter of fact, the current route of the pipeline across this right across some sinkholes and you might say well generally they were trying to avoid car series why did they miss that well they missed it because the first geologic map they looked at was from the department of mineral resources and it drew the end of the limestone just about here at Bowler, just about where we're going to turn up in the little valley now the geology here is this rock is very highly folded uh, and folded but particularly here the rock is an uproar, and it goes right up the valley. So that's brought older rock to the surface. You've got younger rocks on the side, and the very center of the valley, basically the road we're going to be driving up, is right on the axis of the anticline. So that brought these middle Ordovician limestones up to the surface. And we're not real sure how far up the mountain they actually extend, but the area basically was just uh, inadequately mapped probably 20 or 30 years ago. And it's one of the reasons I'd really like to emphasize that we need to be very site-specific on these studies. If we just rely on nothing but the uh, old mapping, uh, it was done with a broad brush. And here we're worrying about very fine detail. 
Now the pipeline itself is going to be buried relatively shallowly, uh, but where we're on the limestone and maybe just a little bit above it, we're in what we call the upper karst. And the upper karst is essentially an infiltration zone, a recharge area for water. So the rainwater is going to percolate down through the upper karst, somehow around the pipeline, uh, and then it'll eventually supply the springs up on the hill and eventually supply the water that we see running uh, in the surface and running in the Jackson River on down. Uh, it's this sort of uncertainty. Uh, you say we're going to be looking at every stream crossing, and you will, the ones you know about. A lot of these stream crossings are subsurface. Uh, we don't know where they are. In some cases we know them. We know they're there because of tracer tests, but we still don't know exactly the depth uh, or the exact position of these uh, uh, underground routes, if you will. So there's this sort of an element of risk involved. Uh, the first time I actually got involved with the pipeline issue, I really didn't, wanted to avoid it. Uh, <laughs> didn't and, we all? <laughs> and several years ago, uh, I guess actually, I guess Rick Lambert somehow, the, the town of Monterey was worried about their water. This was when the pipeline was supposed to go north of here. And I first glanced at it, and I think the pipeline route then was about at least a mile south of town, Monterey. And I just thought, well, you know, with any luck at all, it's not going to affect the Monterey's water. But Monterey is on groundwater. It has uh, two or three water wells it's using. So eventually it was obvious they were going to do a study, and I said, well, I'll take their money. But no sense in letting some other low life get it. So I took a look at it, and... Again, my kind of conclusion was, well, with luck, they're probably going to be okay. But you can't guarantee that something's not going to go wrong, especially on the limestone. Water can travel for miles in this conduit flow um, and not necessarily where you think it's going to go. So it's sort of a probability issue at that point. And you say, well, with luck, you're going to be okay, but I just can't place a probability on it. We don't know enough. So we're back you know, once again to worrying about what we don't know. Uh, I think that a lot of the area that uh, several of the sites have looked at, pipeline's supposed to get through, from a geotechnical standpoint, I think with a good contractor and uh, a little bit of luck, they probably won't have any major trouble. The one site of the dozen or so I've looked at that really concerns me is where we're going right now, uh, Little Valley. Now, I've never been up to uh, uh, Central Corner, so that's one I haven't looked at, but I like to say, the dozen or so I've looked at, if you want to uh, want to move the pipeline out of some place, get it out of Little Valley. It's just got practically everything that could cause trouble. You've got a very tough ridge top of Tuscarora sandstone. It's hard as a rock, believe me. Hit it with a hammer. Uh, that stuff's not going to be easy to crack. Uh, you then come straight down the slopes of the uh, Martinsburg, Reedsville Shale, uh, steep slopes very friable shale. Uh, you then have to cross the uh, karst that uh, up until a few months ago the Dominion geologists didn't even know was here. Uh, all they'd done was look at the old state map and just said well there's no karst here. So now they're in kind of a panic. Uh, they were up here with their geologists uh, last week uh, scrambling to take a look at it. And some of my friends are working for Dominion on this. They've got some good geologists. I don't, uh, uh, I don't mean to take anything away from them that no matter how good they are, no matter how hard they study this, they're not going to know everything, especially on the cars. So, we roll up a little valley? Yeah. It brings a uh, varying discharge, but... Um, well, did awesome and it's warmer, too, yeah. isn't it? Is this privately owned? Yes. Yeah. Who owns it? Uh, Brian can tell Hey, Ryan. Ryan. Good to see you. A gentleman How are you doing? You were in the General Assembly for a long time. Pardon? So, Ryan. Who Patrick wants this? De La Husse. He's um, French, um, lives in Alsace-Lorraine, and has a um, family hotel company in Martinique. Used to come to the homestead. Thought owning a resource like this was an incredible thing. Okay, everybody. I remember. You know who's going to be? Yeah. 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 Yeah